Thank you for joining us today, everyone. We are here joined by Dr. Margaret Lawler from Blackburn College, the Executive Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, you know, thank you for joining us today. To talk a little bit about Title IX and celebrating its 50th anniversary. Um, it's closely related to what you work with at Blackburn College on that campus in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, you've worked for a few different colleges um, during your professional career, but what do you recall about Title IX prior to joining a campus? Did you did, Were you familiar with Title IX or what have you heard about Title IX prior to getting kind of involved with college campuses in Title IX and DEI? Well, my background is um, in higher education. I started off as a traditional resident assistant, did the graduate hall director path, and then stayed in higher education in the in housing and residential life for about 18 years with my part of that career. About I think I've been in the career for about 25 years, 24, 25 years. So um, in my path and my walk, which I won't date myself, but <laughs> the 90s, let's just say, of course, we didn't have in place your, um, your Title IX um, policies and procedures. So as I moved through my career, student conduct and housing residential life, um, we addressed it at a, at a student conduct um, violations and things like that. Um, when I was at Illinois Central College, I served as the diverse faculty recruiter, and I approached my supervisor and said, hey, I really want to get involved with this Title IX um, process, because I knew, and that was in 2015, I knew that we needed a Title IX coordinator, and um, I was in my doctorate program, and I needed to do an internship or practical, I should say, and I thought it would be really good to get that experience. Well, lo and behold, that question about the practicum turned into an opportunity to add to mm -hmm. my position as a diverse faculty recruiter. So it was in 2015, but prior to that, it was more of the student conduct violations. We didn't have any, as you are aware, we didn't have the dear colleague letter to direct us as Title IX coordinators and directors and how to maneuver and, and manage those processes. So um, I just was looking for an opportunity to grow and it turned into a position for me back in 2015. Speaking of creating new positions, you're celebrating I believe in October this month, you're celebrating your one year anniversary of joining Blackburn College. Is that correct? Yesterday was my one year um, anniversary. So yeah. I Congratulations. am excited um, that I made that mount. Not that I wouldn't have made the milestone, but it, it was um, it was a great one. I almost forgot the president actually sent me a congratulations, your one year anniversary. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that means you must have been busy. So can you tell everyone a little bit? What's your first year at Blackburn been like? What what kind of plans or practices, what kind of steps have you taken um, on the campus at Blackburn College? Well, um, I wear many hats in my position. I'm the Executive Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Chief Diversity Officer, and Title IX Coordinator. So this is a newly developed um, position, redesigned position. So I am the first in the role. And in being the first um, in the position, it's given me the opportunity to create the position from ground up. And I love that. I love to be the groundbreaker, I guess, of those types of positions. And so it's been, it's been very interesting. Um, I enjoy the work. I've often said that I'm living my dream out loud because I get to work with students, staff, and faculty in the diversity area, as well as my passion with, um, with Title IX, which is probably a little different for some, like, why would you want to do that work? But it, it's rewarding because it's an opportunity to teach and learn and um, to continue to um, sharpen my tools. So this first year has been um, what I would describe as a year of growth, development, and um, support. I feel very supported in, in my role. And coming in and creating um, and helping um, develop processes that um, may have not been all well-defined because there wasn't that prescribed Title IX um, individual. We did have a Title IX coordinator, but doing different positions, but not really defined there. Um, and I've 
use this word transparency quite often, probably in every conversation and being transparent in all the information that comes out of the Title IX space and DEI space. So growing the office, developing it and creating from a new has been, um, it, it's been great. So I, I think that I'm the, the right person to start, um, I guess a new office to grow the office. So I, I'm enjoying it, it has been great. Yeah, that's always exciting to build something from the ground up yes, um, and kind of shape it that way. Um, you know, if someone, for those that are going to be watching this video, if, if you want to build a supportive community, a supportive campus, supportive personal life, do you have any kind of suggestions or what are some actionable steps they can do to be supportive to, to diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think for me, stepping in this role, being brand new and, you know, it being a newly developed position in itself and growing the office, I think it's important to align yourself with individuals who um, are, um, I guess, somewhat of your subject matter experts in, in and around the interest of Title IX diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and I did that very early on with faculty and staff and um, seeing who your support networks are. I think it's important to include your students in that support area to be able to um, be successful and to grow wherever you need to. And I think it's important to continue to, um, as a professional, to attend as much um, training, seminars, workshops that you can so that you can continue to grow in your particular field. When Title IX turned 50 this past June, correct, I attended the um, NCAA uh, conference and um, I remember we had um, Billy Jean King as our, our speaker and I was just so moved by um, Billy Jean King and others that spoke and attending that and that was all virtual. I think it's very important um, in, in that support network um, in itself, having that support from my supervisors and others. And again, I'm very transparent with that walk. Like if I am attending a seminar or training or what have you, I share that out with the community so that they know, you know, I'm still learning and I'm still trying and, and I did attend and I'm gonna present on what I learned and share out and try to, um, continue to foster relationships um, through the learning, which I, I gain. You know, then that's a great point. Learning and sharing that knowledge. There's so many uh, resources and informational tools that are available. You know, uh, Title IX, DAI, it's not just student athletes, it's the faculty, it's the staff, it's the employees. It covers the whole campus and community. Um, so really sharing that information is really key. Mm -hmm. um, before we wrap up things, what are some of your goals on the Blackburn campus? for you and your office? I think one of our, our major goals is to continue to program around um, subject matters that impact our students, staff, and faculty, as well as our community. Um, not just the Blackburn community, but um, our community as a whole outside of Blackburn that impacts us um, around the nation. So your, your JEDI um, approach with justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So programming within that focus and that mind. I, I have always been a huge proponent of programming for students and staff and faculty because I did say I came from housing. So that's where it all began. <laughs> but um, ensuring that we do have um, programs that um, touch on topics that our community really want to um, engage conversations and learn and build. In this office, I think it's important that we remain and continue to be, not just from the diversity, equity, and inclusion perspective, but under Title IX and many others, a strong resource. Um, being able to be accessible and available to our students and our staff and our faculty and knowing where, um, where we're present. And I say we, I'm, I'm the only we, but um, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, Title IX, recruitment, attention, that's everyone's responsibility, but I think being a resource all around is important. So I, I think those, those areas of programming, being a resource and being available is definitely something that I'm gonna to continue to grow this space. Well, Dr. Lawler, your passion is evident from speaking with you. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you about Title IX and DEI, and uh, we look forward to working with you.